Welcome back to HANA Basics for Developers. In the previous video, we saw how to use SAP UI5 and its OData model to perform create and update operations on OData services. Now, what we did though for the create was to do one record at a time. Maybe you have a larger set of data and you'd like to send it to the server en masse. Uh, we can do that with a OData batch operation. Now, a batch operation can be used in many different cases. Even in multiple read scenarios, we can send it as a batch. And it gives us better efficiency, particularly when combined with HANA, because if you're going to create multiple database queries or database operations, even inserts, we can parallelize those on the server side and if they are sent to us as an OData batch as opposed to maybe sending them uh, from the client side, even if you try to do some sort of looping and uh, take advantage of asynchronous nature of JavaScript on the client side, that isn't going to be as eff efficient as letting the server side parallelize the content um, in a no data batch kind of scenario. So let's go back into our previous example and let's adapt it so that we can create multiple users at a time and send them uh, to the server in one batch operation. All right, so let's go back to the web IDE and um, we'll create a new file, a new, a new view here in our existing OData CRUD. So let's add another view here and let's call this batch dialog. Fragment XML, and we've prepared a code snippet here. So it's a simple little snippet um, uh, with a little uh, dialog, a little pop-up dialog. Um, so we're going to have a place for some content, basically the input fields for multiple um, users but we want to create it dynamically so you can press a button and add a, another line so so we only show as many input columns as what we want to create and then we're going to have a submit batch button or a close dialog button so pretty pretty straightforward and we want to go to our app view we want to add another button here so we're going to call this one uh batch dialog press so we're gonna have another button that's just going to launch this dialog that allows us to create more than one um, user at a time and we're going to need an event handler in our controller for this on batch dialog press so let's go to our app controller and we have a code snippet for this as well pretty big block here and we'll look at this one at a time let's put it down here for our air handler and let's see what we're going to have one second um, all right uh, so what we want is um, when the user presses the on batch dialog button we want to basically do a little pop-up so create a dialog uh, we're going to use the fragment that we defined to be that dialog. Uh, so we're just going to add the style to it. And we're going to create it as a dependency of this view. And then we're going to add the uh, add the content and then tell it to open. So that's what will pop up the little dialog on the screen. And um, and of course we had some uh, some buttons here in the in the fragment on on submit batch and on close. So for the on close, that one's pretty easy. We just have to say um, this get view, so that gets our view. The dialog is an object that's a child of the view. We create it as a dependent object, and we tell it to close. So that's that's pretty simple. Um, then for processing inside our um, our dialog, we're going to have a get item. Um, so this can be pressed to create more UI elements. Uh, so we're creating icons for 
the add and the delete, uh, the first name, the last name, the email, uh, and then all adding that to the UI. So we're building our UI dynamically. You'll see it here in a second when I run it. So we can pop new sets of input fields into this dialog, depending on how many we want to create. And then finally, this is the, the most important part, the on submit batch. Um, so what we're going to do here is out of our dialog, we're going to get the uh, all the content, all the bound content, and we're going to loop over it, and we're just going to build an, um, uh, a JSON. Uh, but now instead of a single user, we're going to take the uh, all the data, and uh, we're going to push it into this user list. So we're going to get however many records we create in the screen into this JSON. You're going to see the uh, calling the O data service is pretty much the same. Uh, but what we need to do here is uh, we're going to tell it that we're going to do a put to use batch true. So we're going to override the settings that were in our manifest JSON. We're actually going to create a separate model object. Uh, even though we've already declared it in our manifest, now we want to change the parameters and for the batch operation to, to use batch, unlike our normal operation, which will use the manifest settings. So what, what you're seeing here is also that we can create two instances um, of the model object of the OData model for the same OData service. So we can communicate to the service in, in different ways with different settings. Um, we do, when we're going to uh, have a, a batch, we're going to have a, a group ID. So we can have multiple groups. Um, we'll talk more about that a, a little bit later in, the, in, in a subsequent video. Um, but then we have the error handler, and then basically uh, we're going to call the, uh, uh, the create uh, command, uh, but, but pass in... Um, well, records one at a time because we told it that we wanted to use batch they will be batch sent uh, to to the server after all the create commands are done on the client side okay so pretty straightforward the only other thing that I want to do here um, to get the formatting to look nice in our little uh, dialogue we actually need some uh, CSS coding and I don't directly include that in the snippets. It's actually, it's not, it's not required, um, but I'm a little bit of a stickler for stuff like this. So I'm actually gonna go grab it here from the sample implementation. It's just a little style block in the index HTML. Uh, and I'm gonna come here to our OData CRUD and I'm gonna add that, where do we have it here? Right after the head. So I'm going to add it right here. So we'll have the CSS styles with the proper padding so that everything looks nicely aligned in our, in our batch dialog. Okay. All right. At this point, we're ready to uh, rerun our application. And what we'll see here is now we've got the extra button. Oh, I didn't add a text description for it. I should have, I should have added that to the, uh, it's not the end of the world, but uh, we want a button description there, right? So let's go ahead and add that. Create the batch. So let's rerun it. See how easy it is to make some of these changes and then immediately see them reflected in the UI, which is nice. Oh, except uh, did I? Oh, I didn't change the key. That was kind of dumb. Uh, there we are. B5. Now let's run it again. There we are. Now we have our create batch. When I hit the create batch button, we get the dialog. By default, we have one set of data, but if we press the plus button, we're going to get a second set. And it would keep going. You know, we could we could do more here. We can get rid of some as well. Let's just to create two records. Uh, so test um, two to at sap.com and we'll call the second one test uh, three test three at sap.com and we'll do our submit the create was successful now because we of the way that we're doing the batch uh, dialog here um, it didn't automatically refresh the bindings um, we'll close the 
UI and we'll refresh and then we'll see our two new rep records represented here. Um, so what you've seen is the is the ability to batch up multiple changes, send them in one request to the server and allow the server to, uh, to decide how they want to process those, maybe parallelize uh, them somewhat, but uh, a bit of more powerful technique if you, um, if you have more than one record that you want to create, update, um, uh, or delete on the server side.